Hey guys, um, I guess a lot of you who are my friends probably know by now I'm I'm a bit of a record geek, I'm, I'm a lot of a record geek, and I'm kind of addicted to updating the database at Discogs.com. In the beginning that was pretty easy because I had a pretty big record collection and I had some rare ones, but you know, more importantly, um, I'm out in Canada, so a lot of the times what happens is if an album is released on, you know, Polydor or A&M or whatever, um, they'll do a run for Canadian consumption on one of our labels out here. Um, I know Quality Records picked up a lot of that action. So anyways, um, they were shorter runs and, you know, for collector value, you, you want to try and get the original American label. But, you know, for either of those reasons, they're, uh, they tend to, to be overlooked on Discogs, so, so that's where I come in. I, um, I update with, with, uh, excruciating details about things that nobody else could ever possibly care about. In Canada, What Now My Love by Herb Alpert actually has blue labels with silver text, as opposed to the ochre labels with black text, to which you Americans have become accustomed. Enter so geeky, right? Oh, uh, speaking of geeky, that that reminds me off topic a little, a lot, <laughs> uh, but but still very important. Um, so the other day was free comic book day, right? So like any self-respecting geek, I um, I went and got my free comics, and then on the way home, I was really jonesing to read them. So I pulled off into this this vacant lot near my house, which is which is known lovers lane, right? But during daylight hours, it just serves as a really nice hidden area where the chronically dateless among us can go and read our comic books away from the prying eyes of, of everyone less geeky than ourselves. So that's what I did. And it went without incident. I, I got my comic book read, thank you very much, and then as I was leaving, I saw over in the grass this, this kind of little spiky ball and I didn't I didn't know what it was but it kind of looked like a puffer fish um but of course puffer fish aren't really indigenous to Prairie Alberta so I went and checked it out and what I found was a puffer fish and I kept it like you do when you find dead sea animals it's so spiky and gross. Um, I don't know where it came from. I, it's got this loop on its back and this, this piece of thread here, so I can only assume that maybe it was somebody's rear view ornament and, and you know, they threw it out the window because it hit them in the eyes one too many times when they went to make a sharp stop. Then again, considering where I found it, I guess maybe somebody rolled over on it during a hot and heavy makeout session and was just like, I am so sick and tired of these little pricks. And <laughs> in this case, yes, that is what she said. Uh, but anyway, the point being, if you or someone you love is, is missing their dead pufferfish, he's right here. <laughs> anyway, um, back to Discogs.com. After I had tapped my supply of rarities and Canadian issues, I still needed to get my fix, right? So I found one good way of doing that is to just buy the least collectible records I can possibly find, like these, these 50 cent jobs from thrift stores, uh, Pickwick's mostly, um, stuff like that, that nobody would really think to add to the database. Uh, oh, that reminds me. I love this record for for so many reasons. Uh, check it out. Pickwick. Um, yeah, Les Baxter. I could have danced all night. Um, and the funny thing to me is that with Les Baxter albums, a lot of the times the covers would be like some exotic looking gorgeous woman on on some tropical background, um, and it looks like Pickwick tried pretty hard to recreate that, but all they were really able to find was somebody's drunk mom, 
and um, and they just they just blur the shit out of this background. So I guess you can pretend that these lights are Rio de Janeiro as opposed to like a string of Kmart patio lanterns that are hanging on the deck of her baby daddy's double wide or <laughs> whatever. So yeah, enough about that. Um, as you can see, I've picked up some real doozies just for the sake of updating this database, but really, none can compete with this. The Lanny Wolf Trio. Let's sing a song about Jesus. I don't want to sing a song about Jesus. That has been the downfall of so many bands I've loved, like The Electric Prunes and Awesome Taunts, and, um... Like, right down to, you know, I was a little young to catch the Nirvana boat on its maiden voyage, so the album that kind of filled the Nevermind niche for my age group was Throwing Copper by Live, and it was amazing, it was everything, it was dark and moody and relevant, and it was just this soundtrack for our very early teenaged angst years. Um. And live, in a few short years, went from this to this. Love shines. Oh, it shines. What happened? And, you know, it's just, it's not even as musically literate as their old stuff. Like, I can't, I hate to admit it, but I can't really listen to throwing copper the same way as I used to. It just it just cheapens it for me, what they became. And their problem was that they they sang a song about Jesus. Now I'm not you know, oh no, she's bashing Christianity. No, I'm not. I'm just bashing your music. Not not even. You know what? Christianity has been responsible for some of the most Beautifully, beautiful. I'm, I am addicted to deface choral masses. I can, I can completely admit that. But that was then, and this is Creed. I've been through everything, and now I'm on my knees. Like I've got friends who are moderate Christians who wouldn't touch that shit with a ten foot pole. Like, nobody, nobody likes, they don't like it. Contemporary, look at them. I mean, this, this kind of Donny Osmond looking chappy here. I guess he's sincere enough, bored as shit, but sincere, I guess. But look at these two, right? From what I can gather about the band, um, these two were, at this point in time, married. Can you feel the warmth in this marriage? Me neither. Look at them. He's like, ha, ah, and she's like, ha, ah. and he's like, I am stuck in a loveless marriage. For Jesus. And she's like, there, there, dear. I only hate you because you haven't sustained an erection in three years. And he's like, you know what? Your hair, which is clearly made of asbestos, is the reason for my impotence. In fact, I've only got four months to live. And she's like, smile for the camera, dear. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, anyway, point being, these are the sacrifices I make f for Discogs.com. This, this, this is the face of addiction here. Um, I sacrifice for you, and 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 you owe me fifty cents.